welcome back to Switched to Linux. It is Monday and it's time for another Linux Top 5. And so what we're going to look at here today is the top 5 reasons to upgrade to Linux Mint 18.3. So I'm assuming on this uh, top 5 that you're already running a previous version of Linux Mint. We're not saying dump everything that perfectly works for you and go with Linux Mint 18.3. What I'm talking about is if you're a holdout, maybe, maybe, maybe you hold out for another week or so just to double check, make sure there's stability things. I've been running this on one of my production computers uh, since shortly after it came out and haven't had any issues yet. And so what I'm going to talk about here today is our top five reasons to upgrade to Linux Mint 18.3. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into this. Number one is a flawless upgrade. The upgrade happened fast. It happened faster than I anticipated, and it was great. Everything worked just fine out of the box. A few little things I needed to look into. Number one is when you upgrade, you don't always get all the newest software. So if you're looking for the time shift, which is on the new installs, uh, you're going to have to actually uh, download that that application. The same with the um, with the uh, the system reports, um, but that's not a real big deal it does upgrade all the rest of the software well so I got Firefox quantum on here now and uh, that's working pretty good I did actually install Waterfox just so that I could still use a couple of the um, legacy applications but otherwise I really like quantum um, and I'm using that as my primary browser but the cool thing is now I have three different really good browsers on here uh, quantum Waterfox and chromium and so I have a lot of variability that I can do. But the upgrade was flawless. I didn't have any other problems, no boot issues. Uh, VirtualBox still worked. That was always a big one. Um, and it kind of keeps the system the way it is. It does not upgrade the kernel. It keeps the kernel on whatever you are. But you do have the ability to go into the, uh, the software system and adjust the kernel uh, as well. So that is our number one. Number two is the new software manager is absolutely worth the upgrade. It is a lot more stylus. It is uh, a lot faster, a lot less clunky, and it works really well. Uh, the other thing that the software manager has is the flat pack embedded into it. So you can download your flat packs uh, from your system uh, as well in the software manager. You no longer have to enter the password to open the software manager. You only have to enter it when you are actually installing something. And the software manager is a lot faster than it was in the past. Number three is the backup software application. So for a new install, you have the new backup software application and you have TimeShift. For the upgrade, you will just have the backup install, but you can still install TimeShift. Um, of course, I've already noted on other videos, the downsides that I see are number one, you cannot yet put those on a network drive. However, if my plan is going to work, then I'm going to be doing a video probably tomorrow or Tuesday on how to actually make that work. Assuming I can get that working, we're going to go ahead and do a video on that. The other thing is it does not give you your uh, hidden files, which basically is all the configuration files for your software. So um, if you have email, you have to check that box to save your email. Uh, that is a downside. I think it's an oversight. But the backup tool now allows you to save your software and uh, your files rather than most of them saving just your files. Um, of course, if you're using time shift, you can save a whole copy of the whole system. So uh, that is another good reason is your backup software. Number four is your online accounts. So this is a feature I personally don't use, but a lot of people would find it useful. If you use Dropbox, if you use Google accounts, if you use Facebook, um, if you use Microsoft accounts, these will allow embedding. So you enter the account and it will allow you to use, for example, I enter my Google account. It will allow you to use the GNOME calendar uh, to manage your, cal your Google calendar. Evolution can manage, and possibly Thunderbird, but I know Evolution can, can manage your, um, uh, it'll manage all of your, your emails. And 
the Nemo will manage your Google Drive, so you can do a whole lot in there. And I'm, I don't think you can actually back, run the backup to the Google Drive, but again, there's probably ways around that. Uh, I'm not going to look at that particular application, mostly because I don't use Google Drive. Um, However, uh, what we are, what we do see with that online account is the nice, easy place where you can add an account and then you don't have to add it to multiple different places. There's also the ability to add IMAP and POP3 accounts. That's a feature I might want to experiment with a little bit more uh, down the road. However, um, the online account function is a very good modern feature for people looking to add their online accounts directly into the operating system as an embedded means. Number five, this is one of the things that there was an issue with in the past is it would either delete your PPAs, your custom added PPAs, or it would disable them. And then it would not respect the software that you had installed. And this is significant as a video producer because Caden Live, the version that was shipped with Caden Live, uh, the version of Caden Live shipped with Linux Mint for a long time was an older version and it was actually a little broken. And if you installed your PPAs and updated your software, then it would actually go back and revert back to the older version of Caden Live. And that was a pain. You had to go in either, and I couldn't remember if it disabled them. I think Ubuntu disabled them. I think Linux Mint actually killed them. Um, you'd actually have to go in and re-enable those and re-add software. That meant for me, Simple Screen Recorder, OBS, and Caden Live. I usually had to re-deal with those. The new version of the new install, the new upgrade on Linux Mint 18.3 does not mess with those. My Caden Live version has not changed. My OBS Studio version has not changed. They're still running on the most recent PPAs. So those are my top five reasons to upgrade to Linux Mint 18.3 if you are using an, your earlier version of Linux Mint. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it very helpful and informative. If you would like to help support what we're doing, you can check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support to learn about the ways to support us. You can check out our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Tom M. I also have some PayPal links and an Amazon store you can check out. So thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.